HH compressor loading and unloading sequence. So there's three solenoids we have to take into account. We have our male unloader, our male loader, and our female unloader back here in the back. Each of these do their own thing in separate sequence. So let me explain what these control. These are your slide valve solenoids. There's a valve in here that slides back and forth on the bolts and it's a big just chunk of metal. I've had videos in the past where you can visually see this. You can go check those out if you're needing a reference. The slide valve loading is very dependent upon the oil level in the system. If we do not have proper oil levels, we're not gonna actuate our slide properly. At startup, this compressor should go into a full unload state for startup every time. Most of these smaller ones like this, we can see around 40% of RLA during startup operation. I've seen it as high as 50, but 40% give or take is the normal. During that startup, you're gonna have energized your unload solenoid and you can take a screwdriver if you don't know and you'll feel the pull on the solenoid. Right now, neither of these are energized because we're at a constant state. We're not trying to load or unload, we're trying to hold. So at startup, this will be energized and your female unloader will be energized, which right now it is, and I can feel a pull on the screwdriver as I'm holding it. You will not have power here, but you will have power here. When we're ready to load the compressor, this solenoid will energize, your unloader solenoid will de-energize, and you will start pulsing the load solenoid, which means that it will get a couple of seconds of power at a time. What that is doing is it's taking the oil from the oil system on the oil input and it's diverting it through internal chambers to where we're using the oil to physically push the puck inside of here, which is what slides the valve operation. So the more we push oil in, the more load we're gonna put on the compressor to move more refrigerant to control the load. Once startup is finished, the female unloader will stay energized for the duration of operation. Now let's say we've made, made set point on our leaving water and we need to unload this compressor. The unload solenoid is then going to be energized and it can be pulsed just like the load. We're not gonna energize the load solenoid anymore, but we will start pulsing the unload solenoid and what that'll do is the chamber that we were stacking oil in to move the puck we will open a port in this valve to allow flow back to the suction of the compressor this will allow that oil to draw out of that because when it's getting pushed in through the loader it's high pressure from the high side of the system so when we equalize it to the suction side it's going to naturally push its way back out into the suction end of the compressor and that's going to allow that slide to move back and it's going to remove load from the compressor we're going to move less refrigerant and it's going to do this back and forth to control load throughout all of its operation. The EEV and everything else works in simultaneous with the compressor loading and unloading based off of superheat. When it comes time for shutdown, we will have the load solenoid de-energized and we will fully energize the unload solenoid and it will stay activated. And in that process, we will de-energize the female unloader to allow the compressor to fully unload and we will do a pump down. During this process, the evaporator is going to be pumped down by closing the EEV and stacking all the refrigerant in the high side of the system. Then once shutdown is completed, we will still have our female unloader de-energized and we will leave our unload solenoid energized until shutdown is complete. Then we come back to startup where this the female unloader stays de-energized until we're ready to load and the unload solenoid will be energized until loading commences. That is the loading cycle for this machine. The female unloader is controlling discharge gas and suction gas on an internal load valve inside the compressor. So when it's energized, it's allowing discharge gas to close an unload valve to where the compressor won't unload internally. When it de-energizes, it releases that gas that we built up in the chamber to the suction side allows that internal valve to open so the discharge gas will, will bypass directly into the suction side of the, of the screw compressor and the compressor can fully unload itself while it's in a coast down state. And this also helps prevent any kind of reverse flow or backward spinning on the screws. This also allows us to have a minimum startup current so that we don't over pull the evaporator. We also put less wear and tear on the compressor. This is base operation for a 
CHH compressor. There's a couple of different series. There are some larger ones. This one is a smaller one. This is only a 70 ton. It's the same base operation for the majority of this series. So if you're trying to understand what it's doing or what it's supposed to be doing, and just using a screwdriver is fantastic. You could also use the Danfoss magnetic app if you choose. I find a screwdriver just the old school way of doing it. Using your phone works just as well. It's gonna pack up the magnetic field as you're going. Give a special thank you to CSG for sponsoring this video, sponsoring this channel. They're the guys I went and did that live training for down in Houston. If you're looking for them, look up Houston Hermetics or American Hermetics out of Dallas and DFW area. They do service nationally and they keep a pretty good stock of compressors in-house. They specialize in screw compressors, recips. They got a full complete shop for you from York to Train to Carlisle to even the Copeland side. I highly recommend them. They've got a great service, a wonderful group of guys Guys, they're gonna take care of you over there so reach out to Jake I got his email in the description he'll get you taken care of he'll get you fixed up whatever your compressor needs are even if it's parts or any kind of tech support troubleshooting things of that nature they will go a long way to get you where you need to be